what's going on guys so right here uh as you can see all i'm doing is taking the uh exhaust manifold off i think there was six 10 millimeter bolts to take them off it was super easy um all i do is loosen them up and the manifold come right off also you might want to spray some pb blaster into the bolts and let it sit for a little bit uh, towards the end you'll see that i accidentally broke off the last bolt but it was super easy to get out all i did was get a drill and tap set and pull the bolt right out so be careful with it not to break them off or you'll have to drill them out and you're going to initially end up doing the same thing for both sides so i'm just going to show you all this one side because there's no reason for me to show you all twice what to do so here we're starting off super easy we are taking off the valve covers they if I'm not mistaken they're eight millimeters it's either eight or ten I can't remember right off the top of my head uh, anyways you just want to take those valve cover bolts off and you pull your whole valve cover out what I did was um, was I put those valve cover bolts all in one bag and labeled them that way I could keep up with them pretty easily but it was real simple to take off. All right, so after you take your valve covers off, this is what you see. You're looking at the rocker arms, which is what I'm taking loose right now, and your valve springs. These are an eight millimeter socket, and be sure to use a six point, because uh, that first one there, that I worked with, I almost stripped it out, but I quickly went over there and got me a 6.8 millimeter, and it come right off. Um, these are kind of a little hard to take off because they were torqued down pretty tight, but just uh, make sure you hold your stand down and take them loose. So after I get the uh, rocker arms off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse my push rods and my rocker arms so I kept up with uh, where they went. Um, I'm just going to do a training kit on my rocker arms. So I'm just going to keep with the stocks on that. And I just got to keep up with where these push rods are going. Uh, later in the video, I kind of asked my dad which which uh rocker was which and the left side on this 5.3 motor is your intake side and the right one is your exhaust side and he was later just telling me how you tell which one was which but anyways that's the left side is your intake and the right side is your exhaust
I am taking off the head bolts. Um, they are 15 millimeter bolts on the inside there and on the bottom of the head they are both 15 millimeter bolts and then you have a set on top that is 10 millimeter um, on the inside of that head you got the one I'm messing with right there that you see on that very last one and then the one at the very front side of the motor those two are shorter than the rest of them so keep in mind put those away in a different bag or something to keep up with them because they are shorter than the ones that are on the inside um, anyways I just kind of used a cheater wrench to kind of get them off because they were on there super good but anyways Took it off, everything looked good. There was just minimal rust on, uh, I think it was cylinder number five. It was a three or five, just a little bit of rust, but it could be fixed easily, just hone it back out. Everything looked pretty good on the inside of the motor, so far anyways. So now here we are moving on to the valley cover. There is, I want to say there was 10 or 12, 10 millimeter bolts holding it down, holding the valley cover down. Um, later on in the video, I was trying to pry up on the valley cover and notice what come out and I forgot to take the knock sensors out. So do not forget to take the knock sensors out. Later on, after I pulled the knock sensors out, it was a little bit hard to pry off. That was just because there was a rubber grommet um, in the little valley that holds the knock sensor down and that rubber grommet was just held on there really good so after I got the knock sensors out and loosened up all the bolts all I had to do was just pry on it and it come right off
start to remove the uh, lifter trays there's two 10 millimeter bolts just loosen those up take the trays out then you'll have a look at your lifters now with the lifters I just spray PB blaster put a little bit of oil in there and just work them in and out in and out as you'll see here in just a second uh, they were a little bit of trouble trying to get out but you just had to keep fiddling with them for a little bit and they finally all pulled out like I said earlier in the video I plan on reusing these so uh, I'm going to put them in the exact same hole that I got them out of so I kept up with where they went and everything. So right here we're using a uh, pulley to pull this pulley off. Um, after you take that uh, bolt out, um, you want to put a longer bolt on the inside to kind of give some room for you to pull that puller, pull the pulley off with the puller. There's some grooves on the back side of that pulley there that they kind of lock into and grab onto. That way you can pull it out, but it come off fairly easy. All we had to do was put the um, impact on there and it come right off. This is a this is a shop. Man. Never doubt the old man. <laughs> so that's all for this part two video, guys. I'm gonna go to the shop right now and uh, finish on the part three of the engine teardown. That's gonna be the whole bottom end for part three. So y'all like and subscribe and stay tuned to see what's up next. So y'all have a good one. One two three four five six seven eight.